Welcome to Waifus of Overwatch. Merry Christmas! <laughs> or, or Happy Hanukkah, uh, Happy Holidays, Happy Kwanzaa, I don't know, uh, Happy all of it. But we, Danielle and I, <laughs> have brought you the best Christmas present ever. You're welcome, universe. Chloe Hollings, little maker! Hello! <laughs> or should we say bonjour? Bonjour. Bonjour et joyeux Noël. Ah, joyeux Noël. She said it in French, everybody. Lose Aww. your minds now. <laughs> so, Danielle, I'm going to let you take take a hold of this one. This is your waifu. This is between <laughs> Widowmaker and Zarya. I mean, those are your two mains. You have made it to level gold in Overwatch by headshotting people as wow, Widowmaker. strong women, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, how I got started with Widowmaker was when I found out Ana was coming out, I'm like, oh, she's a support sniper. I want to try and, like, get better with, like, my snipers. So I picked up Widowmaker just for practice, and then I slowly started loving her more and more. Aww, and more. Yes. So when Ana came out, I was like, I like, I like you, Ana, but I really love Widowmaker. And now it's like, <laughs> if anybody tries to play with that, I'll just, like, give them the sign, like, no, get off Widow. <laughs> it's true. No, that is no joke. If somebody else, if, if a Miranda joins our game and chooses Widowmaker, I'm like, whoa, whoa, back off the whip. That is not, you're not going to play that way. I promise, trust and believe I have somebody who's going to play that so much better. No, that's real. I get salty if somebody else picks Widowmaker that isn't you. I hear that she's very tough, so congrats. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I feel like you have to be a good sniper. It's, yeah, because, well, I used to play a lot of, like, um, first-person shooter games when I was younger, and I played a That's game called Unreal mm. Tournament, so I started sniping from there, and then when I found out about Widowmaker, I'm like, I'll try her out, and then the first few times, I'm like, she's really hard, and we try her again, like, later on, and then I just tried her again, over and over and over again, I'm like, I think I love her, and it's her lines, something about her lines, it's like... Oh, really? It's so evil, but so good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so good. So <laughs> good. No, her, she does have that. the best lines. You get to do it in yeah. French and English. And English, yeah. And yours are so yeah. fully loaded. Like, we're going to talk about all of this. Guys, it's, it's like, again, it's like we're unpacking a Christmas present, and Danielle and I have just ripped off all the wrapping really, really quickly, and we want we want to in inhale the whole thing. We can't do it. we got to do one <laughs> thing at a time. One thing at a time. Yeah, okay. So, you live in Paris. Yes. How in the world did Andrea find you? Oh, this is a great story. I'm I'm so happy that this is possible in this world and it is in this day and age. So are um, we. So I believe they were just looking for someone who spoke French mm -hmm. perfectly well, who was able to do all these ultimate lines, these French sentences. Uh, but and specifically do the Parisian French, because that's a different yes, French. Yes, not, not yes. Canadian French. Right. That is not true. African French. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just did a really super not good thing. Yes, that France is not the only place where people speak French. That is true. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they wanted a very standard French, France French or something. And uh, they apparently couldn't find it in, around in L.A. And so they, the person who was taking care of the French dubbing in Paris, right. offered to look around and try and find um, perhaps a bilingual actress who would be able to do the character and also understand, like, take direction. And yeah. Stuff. So that's how I didn't even know, actually, I had never worked for this studio. Um, but, you know, um, he knew someone who knew me, and uh, I auditioned and I did a test run with the whole of um, Andrea and the whole team, and I got it. Have you ever worked on video games before this game? I had, but <laughs> none like this one. Right? <laughs> well, that I think that's an easy statement. Yes. Yeah, yes. I had uh, like from time to time, but also never like on a on a game when I had to. There's never been a time when I had to like come back and like there right. was no like this Returning evolution yeah, with yeah. the character and like we've added this and so. 
now I'm kind of living with her a little bit, and that's so, that feels really nice. And that's rare in the video game world. Danielle and I, we can attest to that. Like, a lot of the the game sessions is a, you, you book for one day, it's four hours. Exactly. You never see or hear from that character again. Yeah. Like, to get a, a, a game character that recurs, that you get multiple sessions with, I mean, that's akin to booking an animated series. That's the dream, where yeah, you, get to evolve, yeah. you get to evolve with the character, yeah, and you yeah. get to see character development, and you get yeah. to learn more. And because there are also other character developments, so that means n new lines as well, because there's new interaction, and there's new, and yeah, it's so cool. Do you get really excited every time you get new lines to find out more about the puzzle oh, pieces I of really the Oh, I really do, but now, it, I mean... I did BlizzCon in November, and so now it's just going to be wild because I know all these people now. Like I, I know their faces. Yes. I'm so I know. Yeah. For you. It's incredible. So it was always great going there, but there wasn't like this connection. This mm. yeah, this, mm. this physical connection. Yes. Yes. And, um, yeah. So. So, so you've so. met pretty much uh, pr almost the entire cast now because of Blink BlizzCon in November 2017. Um, actually, that's true, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Basically, I, I had met May some there? before. I don't, was, May was, was May there? No, May was not she there. she was there last year. Cara Theobald, uh, who right, does Trace It, right. she wasn't there this year, but I have met her uh, in close. England. Exactly. Of and Zarya. And Danielle. <laughs> <laughs> I have spent time with Dahlia, who's, um, who's, <laughs> Who's the best? Uh, I also love her character. I just, I physically, I just the love yes. Zarya. Who does? And her line. I and her line. Too. And oh my goodness. Go for it. <laughs> the line that you think. I'm the strongest woman in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so we think Widowmaker should now have that Zarya line. I think yeah, really yeah. Nice. Also, the next time you yeah. see her, you have to take a selfie and send it to us. Just so me yes, and Danielle can be like. Yeah. Then Danielle can have both her waifus. Oh, yeah. Photograph, Definitely. frame. So then she's playing. She's yeah. that's brilliant. That's perfect. Oh. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great, Danielle? You're welcome. Um, <laughs> but I love the idea of just, I mean, first of all, Blizzard is best company to work for. There's no question. There's no question. Like, it, it's, uh, even for me, like, going from World of Warcraft and, and the, the stuff that I've gotten to do with that, and Danielle also worked with World of Warcraft, getting directed in a Blizzard session, and then this week I went and did a game that I'm not going to talk about, um, I mean, tell it's you what magical. it is, but it, it was yeah. so different, like, the, <coughs> go ahead and cough, it's the normal, <laughs> you know, it's just normal real life, we're at my house, it's real life, um, <laughs> but it was like, the difference between real acting and real direction to, like, what I had to do this week was, they gave me all the lines, and it was one take per line, they didn't even give me a character breakdown of wow. the, I did, like, seven different characters, they didn't, Wow. It wasn't even written who the characters yeah, were, yeah, and there was like yeah, little to yeah. no information. I'm like, this is not when you work this, for Blizzard. Actually, this is unacceptable. I I finally like managed to process it. Uh, at some point, it was like, oh, what I usually do is voice work. What I do with Blizzard is voice acting. Yes, <laughs> and that That's makes so true. all the difference. It really does. Yeah, I believe you. And Danielle, you you said that she she what was it that you said that she was in? That you, I, I saw that you were in Valerian. Yeah, I was. I really, yeah, yeah. Versailles? For, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Versailles. Versailles? Oh, in Versailles. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, of course, of course. So Valerian, that was, that was such, also such a gift. I mean, um... Uh, so that was Luc Besson's last I'm movie. I'm a huge Luc Besson fan. Yeah. Huge. And I don't know, um, I, I think, like, my agent called me in Paris and was like, yeah. I'm sorry, was... let's just pause there. She gets to say that, and that's real life for her. My agent <laughs> called me in Paris. Oh, it's so romantic. Please continue. Yeah, I love and... it. I love it so much. And uh, she... She just asked me, she couldn't really tell me what it was for and stuff, and there was like this line that I had to record on my smartphone. Okay. And it was just like this one line, basically. And she said, you, the only thing you have to do is like, no intonation, nothing, just the line. They don't want any like characterization or anything, they want something so neutral. Right. Because it's like a robot or whatever. Okay. I was like, okay, so I just like recorded this line and sent it off, and then two days later, I was in the studio with Luc Besson, and I was just like what? doing this whole thing. What? Yeah, it was this crazy. Was I know. That's insane. And it was actually so That's awesome. Was, yeah. Uh, yeah, Alex, the um, the uh, chef. 
unbelievable. So cool. So cool. And uh, and Versailles, that was also a wonderful experience. So now that like English and English shows have become so uh, world widely watched and yes. everything, uh, f uh, this French uh, channel Canal Plus uh, decided to make its own little show Versailles on like French history Versailles on like right. King Louis the Fourteenth, but with an only English cast. It's a oh. it's a Canadian French co production. Oh, go Canada! Yeah, good exactly. job, eh? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that was really bad. I died pretty quick, though. Oh, no. I had this very right. intense scene, though, of like being hung and stuff. Anyway, wow! But, Everybody uh, tune in. Can you watch it on Netflix? Like, where can we find it? Uh, I, I feel think, like I, I think, think it's, it's on, on Netflix. Netflix. Yeah, I think it's on Netflix. I'm so watching yeah, it yeah, yeah. now. I've been saving it. It's in my queue. But now I'm like, oh, now I know why I'm going to watch it. Oh, yeah. My. Yeah, yeah this is like the other side. When I'm going to make it, I kill people, and then this time I'm pretty much the one. Being killed, yeah, <laughs> got, it. got it. That makes sense. Pretty violently. That makes, sense. <laughs> yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Uh, so, um, in, on top of being an amazing actress, which mm -hmm. we, everybody who's listening already knows your work because of Widowmaker, and just because yeah. she's layered, like yeah. she has, oh, yeah. she yeah. has a journey. She like that. Oh my gosh, that short with Tracer. Oh, oh, oh that like short I get goosebumps just thinking everything. about. It. Can we talk about that? And short? again, well, we can talk about this short, but. We have to talk about the writers. Yes, yes. Everyone, yes, like the yes, actors yes. in Overwatch are always in the spotlight, and that's great. I mean, I'm very, very, very grateful. But my God, yes. this would never take place without these amazing writers. I agree. And creators and developers. The team. And to the team. me, this short, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't even say that I have, when you think of it, like, she only has a few lines. I mean, it's, I mean, I don't, I didn't really say a lot in there. Right, when you break it down. Per, yeah, yeah, when right. you really look at the, like, the number of lines there are, it's a lot of fighting and everything, but so <gasps> much information so are much. in those lines. Yes. Like everything oh, wow. you need to know is kind of there. That everything. was the first thing that I recorded. Oh, yeah, wow. With Widowmaker. That was the first. <gasps> I think it might have even been part of my audition. Yeah, I think wow. during the audition, I did a few, like, in-game lines, and I and I also, yeah, did the short. <laughs> and it, it, it's so fascinating to think that the writers were already already there, jumping, like, because that's the very first thing you recorded, and now we get all this extra information now yeah. that the story yeah. starts to unfold and we're starting to yeah. learn pieces, yeah. that, and that they're only giving it to us in be bits and pieces, yeah. like a soap yeah. opera is, it's driving me bonkers. They're brilliant. And also, the, the, the comics and everything, it's, that's another, like, oh, yes, thing yeah. that they, comics are that they are really gorgeous. good with. Yeah, They're so gorgeous and so informative. Oh my gosh, that just that just that one panel. Well, I think it's the Christmas one, and the and everybody's you know celebrating in their own way except McCree's passed out. But Widowmaker's <laughs> at a grave. The panel of Widowmaker just standing at a grave, and your heart oh. just like no words said, and your heart is breaking. Yeah, she's. Yeah. I mean, the fact that she calls herself Widowmaker. Yeah, that's and, informative, and, and that's informative. But when you know that it's because she has made herself a widow, right. that's even like crazy. that's crazy. Yeah, the guilt, the yeah. everything. Yeah, the just the humanity actually. I mean, yeah, let's talk about that. Well, yes. I mean, so again. Many people wonder how it's even possible to relate to a person like that. So I'm all, like, I am who I am, but I'm kind of bubbly and kind of dynamic and, you know, and, like, funny You're sometimes very sparkly. and stuff. You're very sparkly. I'm not, I, like, I don't, I don't think I, I come off as a typical widow maker. No. <laughs> I, would not, I would never pick you out in a lineup of yeah. people, like, pick out the actress who does Widowmaker. Yeah. You would be the last human I would choose. Because I would, I, I would have assumed you were Mercy. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. Or, like, I always say Tracer, but. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tracer. Yes. Or, the same know, bright, per, sparkly like, personality. If they wanted yeah. to invent, like, this new butterfly hero or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, definitely do that. The yeah. butterfly flower hero. <laughs> yeah. Um, then I would make it. Except that, um, except that I can relate to her and we all can relate to her. Yeah. Because uh, there's this um, sense of, of loss that, like she is defined by the tragedies that she has been through in her life and the way that she has decided to deal with these tragedies. Yeah, exactly. And, and I can completely relate to that in the sense that, like, when I was a, a child, for example, I know that I 
like that was my way of yeah dealing with stuff was just like to cut off my emotions and you know it, it it's been kind of my process for a yeah. long time so she takes it like this is a an overwatch character she takes it really far yeah but that's yeah. Basically, basically all that it is it's a person who is needed to be able to live with her past yeah. and then she's blue because because she, her feeling is Live like yeah, feeling emotion is just too hard sometimes, and yeah, yeah, and that's it. And as she says in the in that cinematic in Alive, I've already said this before at BlizzCon, by the way. But for those people, who <laughs> but for those who went it, there, here it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's that she, what she says basically in the cinematic is that when when she was a girl, she had she was afraid of spiders. She didn't really understand them because they felt no emotion. And at the end, she finally realized that actually, at the moment of the kill, they are never more alive. And so hearing those lines for me, suddenly it struck me that, oh, she's just looking to feel alive. Wow. That's, that's yeah. what she's after. And that's what we're all after. It's just that we all have different tools to get there. Oh. But it says so much that that is what she needs. It is like she wow. has, she is so shut down and she is just, oh, you kind of want to cradle it's, her a bit. Yeah, you know? yes, I, <laughs> absolutely. And, but she, you, go ahead, Daniel. I feel very connected to her. Mm -hmm. I'm not in any way, like. She's not murdering yeah. people. Like that. Yeah, I'm yeah. Not a, in real life. <laughs> At least not yet. I just play her. Yeah. But um, I was reading somewhere where um, her lore was, she got kidnapped, kidnapped by this organization, organization called yeah. Alan. And they brainwashed her. Yeah. And then she killed her, her husband. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, no. So whenever I hear her say her husband's name and again, I'm like, oh yeah. my gosh, no. So I feel so bad for her. But when she, I, I do get the, the feeling like, because when you do get like four or five kill, like kills in a row, she'd say something like, I feel alive again, or I just feel yeah. alive. Feels like, and I'm like, this poor girl. Yeah, yeah, so like, exactly. I started feeling so sorry for her after that. <laughs> But it's interesting, your connection with Widowmaker, Danielle, because there's there's certain qualities that Widowmaker has that reminds me of you. Oh. You know, like, you can be aloof, you know, you can, you can be, um, there's a strength about you, an aloofness about you, where it's like, yeah, I, you know, I can play with the team, but I'm cool on my own, too, mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I got you, like, because, like, <laughs> even in the, in the, in the headsets, playing with the squad, I'm obviously the loudest and most annoying, but, um, Danielle will be no. silent for long periods of time, and I won't even know where her Widowmaker is mm. perched, <laughs> like, she is mysterious, and I'll be like, how, I, I, and, I'm not a great player. I'm not bad as I was a year ago, but I'm not a great <laughs> player. So I feel like <laughs> this is the real dynamic. Well, I'm playing Zenyatta, and I'm healing, and I'm killing, and I'm healing, and I'm... Well, I'm not really killing. I'm trying to kill. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm orbing. Um, and, I'll, and I'm not dying right away. But And there's no Reinhardt to protect me. I know full well Danielle is somewhere picking them off before they can get me. I know that she's silently... She is your shield. Yeah, she's yeah. pretending. Like, she's making me feel confident thinking I'm doing it. But she's yeah. the one actually picking yeah. them off. It's cool to be on Widowmaker's team. Yeah, it really yeah. is. Like, be friends with Widowmaker rather than make her your enemy. Exactly. It's gotten to the point now I've gotten people, because I play on console, yeah. where they'll come and, like, message me and say, like, you're a really good Widowmaker. Can you kind of teach me how Ooh. to learn the way to be a Widowmaker? Wow. So I've been coaching people. Like, wow. Kind of with their and as her. Do you live stream? Yes. I do. She does I on do. Twitch. What's right. your Twitch live stream for the people listening? If you want to see an amazing Widowmaker player, you can watch Danielle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, my Twitch is at Danielle McRae 1. Okay. Uh, on Twitch. And I have a... I haven't streamed lately, but I'm thinking about doing it since you got the downtime coming it's up. It's Christmas. Holidays, yeah, and we're going to get a good we event going. Stream. And then we'll be able to probably get the whole squad together because now that yeah. it's Christmas, there everybody's got some time off. So between Christmas and New Year's, we should be good. We oh, should yeah. be good for some squad play, which is my favorite. My favorite is the whole squad. I love that. <laughs> so I have another... Oh, yeah, but well, something yeah. that you also... That, that about Widowmaker, just like yeah. to, to end off this thing, uh, this little subject. Um... She's also a lot about pleasure. 
yeah. she takes immense pleasure yeah. in whatever she does, and that uh, that that is also something that you wouldn't like typically um, think of, of her. But that's what I love uh, about when, when playing her. Um, I mean, like voice acting, yeah. uh, is that every kill and ev- is just like orgasmic to her. And that comes exactly. through when yeah. you read, like one shot, one yeah. kill. Like, it's so, like her, her, her lines are the ones that you want to repeat over and over uh. and over again. And even just the, I'm like, yeah. nobody, and I'm not even playing with you. I'm like, Always. you're all screwed. Yeah, you're all yeah. screwed. She's yeah. coming after you right now. I, I love your lines. The way you, the way the emotion you put into it, the feeling, there's oh. so much feeling. Oh, thank you. And I love that you mentioned at BlizzCon um, that at the beginning when you started recording her, mm. that you wear the heels. Because that's what I do with my oh, Blizzard wow. characters. Yeah. If I'm going to record Blizzard, I'm like, yeah. I got, I'm going to need some five-inch heels to walk yeah. in. I know they're going to give me some powerful woman and I need to bring it. Yeah. Yes. I love that. Because you were saying you were so sparkly and you thought you might be yeah. a tracer type. But yeah. You kill it as Widowmaker. Ha- has yeah. it changed you at all being her in the last year, bringing out those qualities well, within definitely. you? Well, definitely. I mean, um... It's just, again, it's a window, you know, a wi- window just opened of, you. I mean, we're so used to perceiving ourselves in certain ways, yeah, and we think we've got ourselves all figured out, right? and then suddenly you're like, oh, but these people, they see something else in me that I hadn't quite, like, I don't know if it's just that I, I didn't know, or that I'm just not used to it, or, or maybe I was afraid of it, or wow. something, but... It's like, oh yeah, I can, I can be this this woman with these large hips and, you know, yes, I can kick ass. <laughs> yes, you can. Because I like, I'm yes, like more can. of the uh, apologizing every three seconds and like, oh, I'm sorry, I did, and uh, always thinking like, assuming that I've done something wrong. And oh, I think I that's kind you. of like I do that too. <laughs> yeah. <She's, laughs> has that shifted since you've been? It is. Maker? I mean, it, it, it like slowly, slowly but yeah. surely. <laughs> yeah, baby steps, of <laughs> yeah. course. I mean, yeah. are, what are the qualities that you admire most about uh, that that you don't personally have that you or that you don't think that you have that you admire most in the character? Oh, uh, uh of Widowmaker. Yeah, yes. of Widowmaker. Um, oh, just her. Just her self-assuredness. Yes. She knows. Yeah. Mm. Like, she knows. I, I would like she to also. know that, that in that, like, have that same certainty. She knows when she is doing things right. She knows when she is, um, when a, a team player is, like, crap. But she also knows when yeah. she's with someone who's good. And yes. even if she's not, like, the pra- on the praise, like, she won't, like, praise you or anything. But she can, yeah, she, she just knows. She knows. No, I like yeah. that. That's exactly what it is. That self assuredness. Yeah. It's almost like she's always her best. Her. Yeah. Not and for it, but not for and, anybody else. For herself. And it's not only her best. Her. She is always one hundred percent. Yes. So I think that's probably you could probably say that on all Overwatch, Overwatch that's characters. True. That's true. And I think that's what that that's what is so fascinating about them. Yeah. But yeah, every inch of Widowmaker is a Widowmaker. And she does not apologize for that. How I great. The thing about Widowmaker is she's not, she's not afraid of showing who she is to yeah. other people. Like, she's not <clears throat> going to try and, like, say, I'm not this or, you know, I'm yeah. not like that. When she's like, no, I am this. Yeah. I'm confident. I'm, and you need I'm me. I'm very self-assured. And you need And me. get off that payload. Yeah. <laughs> or get on yeah. the payload. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get on the objective. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wish we had more lines. For the people who can't move the objective, like he- healers and, and, um, and snipers, I wish they ha- we could choose the lines that said, get on the payload, get off the payload, get on the point, get yeah. off the point. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Just, just like, scream. <clears throat> just literally, I just want those lines to yell at Genji and Hanzo. <laughs> like, just, so, you guys, stop running around. Get on the payload. Yeah. There's an objective here. Yeah. Oh, lines, I always get really happy when Widowmaker gets more lines. Just, you get to know more about her. I yeah. like the other characters, too. You get to know more about them. Widowmaker, it's like, you get to know a bit more about her with each line yeah. that comes out. And, I also went on um, Overwatch's Wizards uh, forums because she, for a while, did not have a lot of skins, and I'm like, guys, please give her some more skins. Yeah. I've been working on that, so I'm like, thank you. 
Like yeah, you're not the you're not the first who who has uh, told me that actually. Yeah. Yeah, and she's because she, it's she's like having the best doll to dress up. It feels like yeah. why would you oh, miss that yeah. opportunity? Yeah. Like, come on, get some like great big uh, designers to, yeah, to dress do her. Something. <laughs> That'll be <Exactly>. partner <laughs> up with a Saint Laurent or whatnot. <laughs> Danielle, what is your? Fa- I've never asked you. What is your favorite Widowmaker line? Oh, um, I'm making you choose. I know that's hard. I, I love her. I, I love her. What's an aimbot line? Oh, yeah. Really yeah. That line. Yeah. I don't remember that. Do I have to be playing Widowmaker? To... <clears throat> well, she was kind of like. Actually, um, it's in the little voice lines. Uh, oh, got up. it. Got you it. Know, that line. Like, what's an aimbot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's Do you have a favorite line? line? Uh, I have several. What's an aimbot is one of them. Uh, just because I just love every time she's being very cocky. And yes, very, very yes. sure. Like she would ever and... need an aimbot. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. right. Because she... that's also she has a lot of um, humor. Yeah, she she's does. very funny. She she's very sarcastic and dry, and I yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's good. So, what parts of yourself that are similar to Widowmaker? If you could, if, what are qualities that you you recognize? Like, oh, I am. Uh-huh. A little bit of Widowmaker. Uh, okay, I do have this kind of, um, I have this side of myself that is kind of, uh, that is very directive. Yeah. Does that make sense in English? Sorry, sometimes I... Yeah, uh, well, uh, Danielle? Because uh, um, like I... That, that, like, that likes to, like, make, get things moving and, like, is in charge. Yeah, yeah. yeah direct. I have this, yeah. Oh, you're very assertive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I can go. be assertive and, like, uh, yeah. So I, I recognize myself in, in that. As I was saying, the pleasure thing, I, I like to do things out of pleasure, whether it be, yeah, anything. And I think Widowmaker does as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I think she goes to where the pleasure is. Um, even if it's hard to understand sometimes, but, but for that's her, but what it, it she is. She doesn't have to make excuses. Yeah. She's unapologetic. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. And I, I, yeah, I don't think she does it like, I don't think it's like a cerebral thing for her or right. a, or, a, or a strategy thing. I think it just gives her tiny orgasms. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, what else? What else? Um, I don't know. Hmm. I'll think about that some more. Uh, probably... Long pause. <laughs> hey, that, that's real life. Um, Everyone's, everyone will wait. Yes. Like, okay. <laughs> what is she going She's to thinking. say? In fact, <laughs> we will follow up on this if we ever have Chloe back. Hint, hint, maybe, possibly, if only. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can keep answering that question because more will be revealed in time. Um, yeah. <laughs> right? It doesn't have to be. Did you Have you ever played video games? Do you play video no, games No. I mean, I used to play, like, as a child, I probably played a little bit on... I played Doom. Oh! Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, that's, I, I expected I you to say, like, Super Mario, right? No. Oh, yeah. You, you come out with Doom. So, okay. I, I played that a little bit Mario, of Super way. Mario, a little bit of Doom. Sorry, Danielle. It's okay. No, that makes me happy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, and a little bit of Crash Bandicoot. Oh, fantastic. When I was a teenager. And that's it. <laughs> That's not bad. That's, that's not the no... game I played. <laughs> but, but Danielle, let's be real. What games don't you play? I think that would be a shorter list. Yeah, yeah. I, I do. I really do. That's a good question. I, I know, right? I know. Oh, oh, it, oh I love this. I, Andrea mentioned the Overwatch spirit during BlizzCon. Yeah. And that's something like, for people, I mean, I've been so deep into this game with Danielle and our squad for, for so long now that... It blows my mind when I meet people who don't play Overwatch. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. um, what really? universe are you living in? I thought <laughs> everyone in their child yeah. is playing Overwatch. And because it does have like the, what attracted me to the to the game was the animation and how bright it was and how mm. uplifting it was. Mm. And then when I got in and I realized it wasn't dark and even though it is about saving the world, it's still not dark and depressing. Mm. It's very uplifting and, and and the, the the teams of people like 
I have met so many people through Danielle and the other squad members who play Overwatch. I mean, I literally, Danielle and I have recently been playing Overwatch with voice directors of other video games. Mm, and, wow. Like, they work on other video games, but mm. at night, we're all playing Overwatch together. Mm. Like, <laughs> that's crazy. It is crazy. Yeah. Like, they, there's a certain... Overwatch brings people together. Right, that's In an amazing spirit. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does that mean to you, Overwatch spirit? What is oh, that? Because well, now you've felt it. Now that well, you've been yeah. at BlizzCon, you have felt Overwatch spirit. Completely. Uh, well, to me, I have a friend who would put it this way, and I and I think it's very accurate. Um, he's always going on like every time um, there's like something going on in the news, like with you know inequality mm. or uh, whatever. He always says like, "God, this is 2017. Like, how is this still a thing? Like, how is sexism right? still a thing? Right. How is racism still a thing? Like." In a way, the way he he puts it is it is kind of like, aren't we over this? Like, shouldn't we be like miles away from this? Yeah. To me, Overwatch is so 2017. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. It's like, oh, this is this is the world now. This is all right. This like um uh, this is a game that has caught up right. with what 2017 is supposed to be or 2018 right. and like the the right. present. These great heroes, Anna. She's oh. over fifty, but she is a superhero, and we're not like pretending. Like, okay, let's let's imagine that, like, maybe this this older woman character type can, uh, in fact, destroy. I don't know, right? Right, right. No, actually, she can. And if you've ever met this voice actress, oh. Aisha, she literally is, and a she superhero. will. <laughs> yeah, she like, is. she's she's for real. Like she, there is no distinction between Aisha and Anna. Like no, they, no, no. They, she's living in some yeah. real life conditions. She's a power woman. Wow, yeah, she's so good. Wow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then little May, who's all chubby <laughs> and, and and so cute, but she has this brain that is incredible. Yeah. And each of them, they they can save the world and they can make it through Overwatch. Because of these specific qualities that are only their own. Yeah. It's not like, um, it's Everybody not like we're all it. like fighting right. without fists and some are better at this than others and stuff. It's not like, no, uh, Anna has this motherly thing that makes her great. Yeah. And that makes her this, the, yeah, that you can drives depend on her, her yeah. and that drives her mm. and that, and each character just has this, this thing that makes it, it's, yeah, it, it, Again, they are all 100% what they are. Yes. Every little bit of them. Totally unique. Which means that so many of us can relate to yes. to them and find ourselves. Like, so this is 2017, but 2017 is also a period in time when there's a lot of harassment going on at school and yeah. there is a, a lot of judgment and, like, the internet is here and it's, it's new. Like, none of... Us really know how to deal with it because when we were kids, that didn't. That yeah, our a personal thing. life was not all on the internet. Yeah. nobody knew when we made a mistake. Yeah, a bunch of people did not highlight the fact that we made a human error and then decide to post it for millions of strangers yeah, to judge. Yeah, yeah, right. and and but with Overwatch, it's like everyone. Has a family. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's mm -hmm. I, I find that amazing. And you can amazing. choose your family. And yeah. you can choose your family. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you can choose who you're gonna be, and you're gonna choose. I think it's just. And inspiring. what I like is that. Um, I know that it on the surface you would say, "Oh, this is the good side. This is the bad side." But when you die, when you really look at it. It's a fine line of like you can't really tell. No. When you start yeah. unpacking the reasons, like because of the comic books and the interstitials starting to give you more information. Because mm. even, you know, Doomfist knows why he's doing what exactly. he's doing. Like exactly. it's, it's 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 never as it's good never black and, and white. Yeah. It's never yeah. black and white. Exactly. But as as it should like as it should be in life, um, most people, I'm so I'm not trying to like defend criminals or anything. That is not <laughs> yeah. my desire. But as an beings. actor, yeah. but as an actor, I that is what fascinates me. That is the reason why I decided to become an actor. I have just been fascinated by human beings my whole life, and they're more so than than I mean being on stage and stuff. That, right, I mean, right. I, I like it. it. It's okay. But um, if it was purely being on stage or on camera, I wouldn't be doing this job. I do this job because I want to find out. Why does someone yeah. kill someone else? Yeah. Why why does a mother kill her child? Yeah. Why does uh, a parent 
beat up his children. And sometimes when you really go deep into things, you fit, you f kind of figure out that most of the time the reasons are good, even if it's like twisted. But so Doomfist, yeah, he wants he wants you to learn, and that's why he's so hard with you. He wants. He thinks that people learn and become better because you are harsh with them. Yeah. And you expect a lot from them. Yeah. So many people work like that. Mm. That doesn't mean that it's good. It's but. just it's just a part of life. Mm. And I do believe that the more we understand um, people and patterns, and the more we can do something about it mm. and acknowledge acknowledge it and and uh, transform. Oh. I feel like this is a perfect transition into the book <laughs> that you have written. Uh, I was thinking about that book too. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, you guys. Okay. First of all, she wrote her book in French. I'm going to spell out the first word so that we don't say it out loud. The F-U-C-K, <laughs> Le Régime, uh, which doesn't mean the regimes. I know you're all in English people thinking the regimes. Uh -huh. No, Le Régime, which means diets. So F, diets. Um, but it doesn't, it, the book isn't about her talking about, oh, diet suck. It, it's really, I mean, I, I only got to, I, I was going through some pages, but each page I would just randomly turn to, and it sucked me in. And it's in French right now, and hopefully there'll be full yeah, English translation hopefully. soon. But, it, I mean, each page is like a love letter to women on giving <laughs> themselves permission to be themselves, to love themselves the way they are, to yeah. break free of all the garbage that everyone is putting out on us. Like, yeah, on what a so many people. on so many levels. What made you decide to write this book, and 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 the, what was the process of writing it? And now here you are, and people, <laughs> we're all, we, uh, now that you've been to America, and we're all like, "Where's the English version?" Uh, yeah, you yeah. <laughs> Can you I talk about it a little bit? Yes, I'd love to. Um, so I, okay, so th this is um basically a bit of my life story. I was twenty two. I had decided, uh, like, I know, I was twenty two. I had kind of been hating myself, hating my body, and kind of dieting very on a very, very regular basis forever, like since wow. I was about nine or ten. Because so you're quite thin. I'm, there is no problem with me, yeah. Okay. I mean, I have but always But at that been, time, were you this thin and thinking I've that I've always way? been like a medium average, like I've never had a health problem okay. linked to my weight. Okay. I was always just this... Except I was perhaps a little chubbier than my other friends, or you know when I was a when I was a kid, but nothing dramatic. Right, right. Um, but it still got into my head, and it became this whole thing where, uh, even if even when I wasn't dieting, so like when I was ten or eleven, I wasn't like literally dieting because right. my my parents would never let me do that. But I was still cautious and thinking about it, just thinking and comparing myself to. Other, other girls people. to other people mm. and stuff. And at some point, so then I got a little older, I started really like doing these great huge diets, destructive diets. So like I, I wasn't being very nice to myself. That's mm. how I would put it. It's just um, this thing when uh, basically, right, I remember, for example, um, doing this super huge diet and losing, so I don't know, the, I don't know the metric system. What would, what would eight kilos be? Um, <clears throat> that would be like five pounds, four and a half pounds. But would it be like the opposite? Wouldn't it be like a sixteen? Wait, I feel like kilos are there'll be more kilos than there will be pounds. I think I don't know. You guys figure it out. And I think it's double. It. I, th I think okay. it's more like sixteen pounds. Maybe okay. Oh, eight kilos might be sixteen pounds. Yeah. Oh yeah, because well, because I when I think of the gas, a hundred and ten ki, you know. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Kilometers per mile. It's less in miles. Anyway, I shrunk <laughs> down to an X. Like, let's just say that I shrunk down to an excess size. You can okay? say the kilo size and they can Google it. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah. You look it up. Yeah. So I lost eight kilos. And, um, and I remember one day looking at myself in the mirror. And I was wearing just like my little like uh, pants, like underpants. And I was like, okay, I'm perfect. I love myself. And it felt great. 
And but later on, like when I think Damn. about it now, I'm like the problem is because everyone is looking for that. So every person who but goes who on a diet, that exactly, forever. exactly. Right. Every person who goes on a diet will say yes. But I mean, ultimately, I'm doing this for me. I'm doing it. I'm doing this because it makes me feel better about myself, and that's the way that I can love myself. But love isn't like this tiny little space right. in, in which like you have to be able to. Fit, to fit literally. all of the time there is no nothing that comes from the earth is like that like there is no right. animal no plant no tree who just stays like it's constant only robots are like that and like no they not even characters. them because they break down and they need to yeah, be fixed exactly. and, and even even yeah. phones go out exactly. of date everything gets exactly. out of date exactly nothing so, stays the same so basically, yeah, I, I wasn't mean, being a kind human. I, I wasn't being a good friend be, to myself. How can you be human yeah. and go out and live life and still expect to stay the exact same, like, in that yeah. moment? And being at that age, be, yeah. like, that's kind yeah. of, that's a pressure to and, put on yourself. Yeah, it's terrible. So at some point, I, 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 and I finally realized that not only was this making me really unhappy, but it was just not working as well. Right. And right. it was just not, diets did not work. Right. And the third thing was like, okay, I also happen to know, because I'm not completely crazy, that in fact, I don't really need to diet. I mean, it's not like, it's not like there are doctors telling me that if I don't diet, I'm going to like die. die at like age 23 or something. Right. It, and, and suddenly it was like, but wait, how come, how come no one is ever shocked by this statement, how come? Uh, bless you. Thank how you. come no one is ever like, "Oh, really? You're on a diet?" It's like you can be you can be really thin and on a diet, and no one will be like, "Well, that's weird." It's like um, exactly. I'm not sick, but I'm taking all this medication. <laughs> like no right. one, no one would let you do Nobody that. Nobody stops you. But here, yeah. no one really stops you. And so I was like, "Okay, I oh. don't care anymore." They don't work, so I'm so I'm not going to do this for the rest of my life, like losing weight, putting it back on, losing weight, putting it back on, and defining myself like, oh, oh I've lost weight, I, I'm good. Oh, I put the weight back on, I'm bad. That I was like, this is boring. <laughs> but um, that is probably the most important statement that we never say out loud. If I lose the weight, I'm good. Yeah. If I put it back on, because I'm bad. And all of the media reinforces that. Completely. Oh, you put the weight oh. on, you failed. Yes. When you are life. thin, and that is a funny thing. When you are thin today, in the West, let's yes. say. Yes, okay. Um, people just assume that everything's okay. Right. Yeah. People assume, yeah. and I think that that's a big part of the, of the swindle. Yes. It's that people want to be thin because it is so much easier to make everyone believe that you're happy when you're thin. Yeah. When you are not thin, it, people immediately goes, go you to, must be miserable. oh, there's probably anxiety or there's probably like overeating or there's probably this or there's probably that. Yeah. When you're thin, you can be miserable. No one will ever, ever, ever know or try to like find out but she fit into her clothes this morning she already won yeah yeah exactly and <laughs> and it's it's weird how it's become this and it's really internalized as well it's a it's brainwashing like we don't even, isn't it we don't, re we don't really have to think about it yeah. it's just uh, it's just there so i stopped dieting and i put on a lot of weight very 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 quickly like 40 to 50 pounds wow uh, pounds this time <laughs> in like <laughs> in like to yeah two and a half months or something wow but while i was putting on this weight which was like literally my worst nightmare right <laughs> right this was not like a dream of mine this is what i had been avoiding my whole life or right. like like a good chunk of my life let's say um so i was getting really 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 miserable but as i was doing that i was kind of looking to understand um why it meant so much to me to be thin yeah. what was really behind that why was i why was i eating the way that i was eating what was pleasure to me what, what was i eating out of pleasure like was i finishing my plate because i really wanted to eat my whole plate or was it because i needed to be well behaved right and then this whole it just went in all kinds of places and thoughts about my sexuality and the way men were looking at me and did I like to be looked at and oh I'm an actress I, I chose this job where everyone is looking at me all the time and yet maybe I don't feel safe with that so maybe the fact that I'm eating is also so that people will leave me alone in a way and then 
all these so different deep. different things. Um, I'm resonating with everything you're saying. <laughs> um, all these different things, which finally kind of led to a moment of just acceptance, I guess. Mm. And this moment when I just went, oh, actually, um, this is a tag, and this is just a number, and I don't, and I don't really care anymore, and I look fine, and I might be like this for the rest of my life. And then, not that this has anything to do with it, but I did like lose all the weight without without trying. But that's because you had gotten to a place of acceptance, and you weren't yes. like the the. It's interesting. For me, when I eat a lot, it usually is emotionally re yeah. related. And then as soon as I get to a level of acceptance of whatever it is I'm dealing with in life at that moment, the moment I accept where I'm at, the eating kind of falls away naturally because I don't need it for that emotional comfort anymore. Yeah. And so uh, for me, what's resonating with what you're saying is my body goes through waves. I go through waves of periods of time where I'm super skinny, not trying to be, just am. Yep. Yeah. Periods of time when I'm super juicy, not trying to be, just am. And then I, it's taken me decades to figure out to let myself be wherever I am yeah. and just to have the right size clothes in case. I find the, the biggest thing for me is if I have all the sizes that my body has become and goes back to, then I always am prepared. And that way yeah. I never have to beat myself up for having something that doesn't fit. Yeah. Either way. I was like, oh, no, I, I just have to go up to these jeans. Yeah. Not a big deal. These jeans fit fine. I look good in them. But it's just my my juicier body. Yeah. Or these jeans don't fit any. I got to go to the smaller size. Okay, that's fine. And that's all it should be. I mean, it's funny how now, again, all these things, they've been, they, we like, we associate them with, with like food is associated to yeah okay so comfort or yeah. not celebration that, no, it's not just like eating can just be eating right and, right. and having Wouldn't a body that, that and like being fat can just mean like being fat and it doesn't have to mean being bad or right. being ugly or, or being, bad word yeah, yeah yeah and it's just and it's interesting I, I saw someone post the other day um, the a little girl had had gone to the beach with her mom and and she said to her mom mommy you're fat. And um, and she said it in a way that was like, oh, it was That's a bad good, thing. Yeah. And and the parents were, they both the father and the mother were not the type to talk like that. So she, the mom took the little girl aside and was like, well, what, what what do you mean, mommy's fat? So the little girl explained it again and said it in a bad way. And and the mom, this was brilliant. The mom said, honey, I'm not fat. I have fat. I, I can't be Wonderful. fat. I can't Wonderful. be fat. Fat is not something you are. Yeah. It's something you have. And guess yeah. what? Every human body has fat. Just some people have a little bit of fat. Some people have a little bit more fat. But also because some people need a little bit of right? fat and some people yeah. need a little more fat. Exactly. This isn't just like... Yeah, a punishment. This it is was just, such a light bulb. Yeah. She's like, oh, so you? I don't tell people they are fat. I just tell people they have fat. Yeah. That's a different I thing. Like that. I, I have really fat. Do. You have fat. And and the little boy, her brother was there, and he understood. Oh, because I have muscles, and then I have fat over my muscles. Yeah. And, and understanding. And the mom's like, you you don't need to be ashamed or afraid of fat. It's something that human bodies have, but you don't have to shame or or shame anyone else for having it. That, yeah. that, that, that doesn't tell you who they are. Yeah. Oh, I wish we all thought like that. So this mom, and oh, then the, that, I saw that, then I saw your book. I'm like, the universe is trying to tell oh, me something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. The universe is telling you, love yourself. Yeah, <laughs> let it go. Let it go. And as you were saying, it's also <clears throat> one of the things that was kind of mind-blowing to me was also realizing how basically, okay, I was born in, in like, uh, the late 80s uh, in a world where women are free, uh, supposedly. What <laughs> like, country were you born in? In France. Uh, but so I, I was kind of brought up in this world where I could vote and I could have a bank account and I could work. And all this to us in the West means like, yeah, we're free. We've, we've like fought our battles and stuff. And then next to that, it's like, well, okay, I can work and everything, but I'm still this prisoner up yeah. in my head yeah and and the crazy thing is now it's not the government who is like holding chains it's not like my husband who's telling me you do this or you do that right. it's me me myself i'm not waiting for anyone to tell me you have to look like that you have to eat like that yeah you have to do not eat this do not do this uh you have to go to the gym right now 
It's like I'm doing it to myself, and if anyone like I'm not doing it anymore, but it's basically I right, used right. to be doing it to myself, and yeah. if anyone had asked me, and this happens all the time, mm. people also because they are convinced that that is the truth will say, but this is what I want. It's like, interesting. Do we oh, like we oh. have made ourselves believe that? That's okay, what like want. what you want? No, what you want is a piece of chocolate cake. Because if you really <laughs> want it, you it, would get it. Yeah. Because when we really want something, we get it, and that's right. If I want a piece of cake, I'm gonna have a piece of cake. Yeah. If I want to yeah. be super exactly. fit, I won't choose the piece of yeah, cake. Yeah. Yeah. Because it will be within my intrinsic nature to actually follow through and I learned to listen to because I do go through periods where I I love going to the gym and I'm working out but I'm not doing it necessarily to I mean I did in my yeah. 20s I did in my 20s I was yeah. so super fit but I was also super impressed at what my body could do and I yeah. wanted to push my body to see what it could do I was really proud of what it could do and I knew yeah. it was a short period of time in my 20s I was like I don't want to do what I'm doing to my body now yeah. when I get older. In my 30s, in my 40s, in my, I don't want to do what yeah. I'm doing in my 20s. Yeah. But this is the time yeah. to do it. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. I have the, the metabolism yeah. and everything. And it felt great then. And I loved myself. And I took lots of photographs. So I had yeah. proof that I did it. Yeah. But then it was, the, the deal with myself was you're going to give yourself permission to do whatever it is you're focusing on in your mm -hmm. 30s, in your 40s, in your 50s. If it's more important, follow that. Yeah. yeah. I think I think there's actually no problem at all with wanting, actually with like wanting to diet all the time or wanting to be super fit or whatever. Right. I think everyone should do whatever they want. But um, I think it's always better to live in a world where people are not lying to themselves. Yeah. So yeah. if it's like, I know, okay, I know that I need to be thin in order to be relaxed. I don't know why. It may be like something that I'm still processing or it may just be what it is. My body but at works least, better or something. Okay, I'm aware and now this is what I need and mm. that's fine. Um, I have more of a problem only because it always affects other parts of your being as well. Right, right. With like, I'm making myself believe that I, that I want to be like this thin and everything and that that's not a problem at all. When it's kind of... It, feels sometimes like it, there's a lot of repression there and it feels like you're it's not really yourself that you're that you're obeying to but kind of I don't know no and that makes sense because you could do the same thing like if you're if you're if you're bigger and juicier and telling yourself I really want to be this way if what if you actually don't want to be exactly that way? exactly that, that it works could be the, both ways yeah because yeah. it's about being truthful to yourself like I'm at a place where I'm very pleased with my juicy self um but I never used to be pleased with yeah. my juicy self because after being on camera yeah, all those yeah, things. Yeah. but now I'm at a place where I'm so comfortable with it I, I I really am enjoying it and just to be honest with that like I remember someone judging me you know, because I we live in LA, and and I, somebody was saying something like, "Oh, you know, I should be on." Because somebody was talking about they're trying to lose their yeah, weight, yeah. Which mm -hmm. for them, they just assumed because they are that I would be trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, it was such an interesting thing for me to to really check with myself, and because part of me was like, "Oh, maybe I'm supposed to be paying attention to what." And I almost wanted, and I think I almost like I was like, "Well, you know, right now I'm going through something emotional." Like I started making an excuse, yeah. And before I stopped, I went, "Wait." No. no. Yeah. I am juicy. Yeah. I don't mind my muffin top. Don't yeah. judge me. There are plenty of people who find this attractive, including me. Exactly. And that's all Yeah, that and it's funny how, yeah, your first re reaction, re to reflex, <laughs> not only to defend it, but defend it with something negative is happening right. to me at the moment. That's why. What about, because, like, truth be told, any time that I ever really put on weight for a long time was when I was falling in love. Just because I was yeah. like so, eating for in, two. yeah, eating yeah. and enjoying like That's, restaurants and we talk about and that. I love food, yes. so yeah. yeah. And when you're eating, and men eat, yeah, men, like if you're a heterosexual person in a relationship, especially the beginning relationship, men want to eat all the time. Yeah. And when you're yeah. the partner, you're eating with yeah, them. Yeah. And it is perfectly normal for women to gain a lot of weight just because men are eating a lot more meals than a woman necessarily yeah, yeah. would eat. And honestly, like, not, 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 now everything has changed. But at the time before I did all this, um, actually the moments when I was the thinnest were also the moment when I was the most miserable. Wow. Because, first of all, because all of this was going on in my head. Right. And, like, once you, it's not, like, it's never enough to do the diet. 
Right. Once you've done the diet and you've lost the weight, then there's the stress that you that is that is maintain, put on because you've got to maintain it. You've got to oh. stay that way, and it becomes like such a need uh, to not like destroy all this all the, the effort yeah. that you put into it yeah. and stuff. So I was actually, and I remember. Mm. So when I was um, twenty, so this was like almost ten years ago now, I had this miscarriage. Wow! And it was really it was, even though. See, like humans are weird. Even though I, I, I wasn't planning on. It was like kind of an accident, and I wasn't really planning on keeping it mm-hmm. or anything. So many would think that you know, oh, a miscarriage, who, boy, you yeah, dodged cool. a bullet, right? But right. for some reason, um, it really, really, really deeply affected me, wow. and I become, I became really, really sad and depressed, and that's when I, I actually lost a lot of weight during that time. Wow. A, because then that was a, a good moment to, like, be focusing on my weight, but also just because I wasn't eating and stuff like that. So, but I remember that, so I was at my thinnest back then. I was also going to the gym like crazy and yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not only was I at my thinnest back then, and I was also at my most miserable, but I was actually, um, I don't know how to say this. Um, I was enjoying the fact that I was thin. Yeah, at the same time. In the midst of all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the the, the cherry on the Sunday. It's like somebody who was definitely, definitely ill. Yeah. But at least I've lost. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And when I think, and when I think of that, I just really, it's like what we were saying with Widowmaker. I really just want to go and like give myself a big, big hug, because yeah. that's so sad, it's like, no, yeah. you, I was, like, grieving, but, oh, phew, silver lining, at least, my jeans uh, like, my, yeah, my size two jeans yeah, done up, exactly. finally, <laughs> just think that's just horrible, wow. because oh. I would never say that to a friend, like, I would right. never, congratulations, your yeah. depression got you all yeah. the way down to size two, yeah. well done, <laughs> Oh, yeah, and she and it, and it's funny imagine. how we treat ourselves in wow. ways, and we talk oh. to ourselves in ways that we would never talk to anyone that we actually exactly. love. Well, and that's what I like about your book. You're talking about all of these things and concepts and and truths. They're just truths for for females in female bodies on the planet currently. There's so many truths that you're talking about out loud that I have never spoken about mm-hmm. out loud. Where I'm like. I feel busted. Mm-hmm. I feel but like that was the first page I read. I I think it was that one twenty. You told me to turn to page yeah. one twenty, and it I felt busted. I was like, I probably need to read this. And the rest of me was like, don't read it, don't read it, because <laughs> you're gonna find stuff out that you already know that you've been ignoring. I want to read this book. <laughs> I know. Can you tell tell? So you you've translated. But you know, I did see uh, a quote from your book that you did take a picture of on your Twitter, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. So- I need to read this book. So what do you think it might get? That actually, what you saw, Danielle, is actually the page 120 that, um... That I read! That Erin is referring to. Yeah, I read it in the French. So you're going to get the book translated, right? Yes, I'm hoping to. And, um... Oleg was brilliant enough to suggest that you do an audio book. Yeah, I'm going to. Which we're highly, highly hoping that you do. And then do it in French and then do another one in English. You're going to have to get it all done. Yeah, all done. Okay, perfect. All done. Perfect. I hope so. I really hope this Because that's something that I would love to be driving and listening to in LA. Oh, yeah. Like, how empowering to be like, okay, and then show up on the job. And then being at the job and... I can't tell you how many times subconsciously, it's all this subconscious stuff that I don't think about. Like I get dressed and I think, um, because it's a, you know, a studio filled with men and this, you know, maybe there'll be a a woman peppered here and there, but majority males. And I think, oh, I'm going to have to dress so that they, you know, don't think I'm, you know, too big because God forbid Mm. a voice actress be too big. Yeah, yeah. You know, (laughs) yeah. Yeah, and, And the fact that I'm even thinking all of that, like to have your book, so I could get there and just let myself be myself and not be thinking of any mm-hmm. of that subconsciously. Or just to be yeah. able to police those thoughts and be like, hey, hey, you're thinking that nonsense mm. again. Why don't you just do your yeah. job and be the best you? Yeah, or like, okay, because I still get it as well sometimes. Yeah. I still yeah. get the, like, internal critic whatever. Yeah. Um, but then you learn just not to listen, basically. Yeah. You just you learn to say, okay... 
I hear you, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I will live my life anyways. Yeah. Oh, we yeah, are. I'm actually getting to that point where I'm actually starting to silence out that other voice. It's, it's hard sometimes, but it's like. But that's where pleasure is such a help. Again, with the pleasure. Is this an yeah, obsession? Baby. Yes, it yes, is. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, it, but it's true because actually the brain, like we are wired to go towards pleasure. That's how, that's actually how we're supposed to eat. That's how, that's how we're supposed to live our lives. And where was I going with this? I have forgotten. But, um... I can't, yeah, well, that's just where it, it comes in. That, so that's what helps help. me. Yeah, it helps. Because the voice yeah. is just, it's, it's a voice in your head. But the pleasure that you feel with your body is so much more powerful. It is. And the vibes that you get from that. So, yeah. for example, you're, you're hearing this little voice and you decide to put the music on and dance. <gasps> oh, then oh, that, that voice does not, we, you don't care anymore because it's just, I just love to dance. Yeah, so. you are. <laughs> and you're amazing. Like, your endurance <laughs> dancing is fantastic. I, I, Chloe danced all night, like, oh. all, literally all <laughs> night without oh. breaks. I was so, I was, I could not keep up. I, I love to <laughs> It really does. But so anyone has it, it their own different so thing. It's so releasing. All the endorphins that release, you, get, you forget about your yeah, problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing the fun thing. Exactly. Oh, yeah. exactly. Yes, I love that. Oh, so, uh, thank you for being so honest and talking about your book and being so honest about the book. I'm very excited about it. Again, it's called F-U-C-K, Le Régime. Um, and there will be an English version at some point. But we want to make sure that everybody's following you on social media and know about yeah. your website so that they can uh -huh. keep up with you and follow yeah, you. Yeah. So what... So, uh, well, basically, I'm just on the, all the regular Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Perfect. And then I have a website, which is chloehollings.com. Uh, just C-H-L-O-E-H-O-L-L-I-N-G-S dot com. And, and is that all your handles at Chloe Hollings on Instagram and Twitter? So one of them is Chloe underscore Hollings. I think that's Instagram. And I think Twitter is Hollings underscore Chloe. Okay, great. Like Chloe underscore Hollings or Hollings underscore Chloe. Yeah. You'll find it. You'll, and if not, yeah. just go to at waifus of OW. Where she's in the, our follow list. So you can <laughs> find her from there easily, yeah, easily. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and that's we're so grateful. I can't believe the gift that BlizzCon gave us this year that we were able to meet with everybody and, oh. and have like this amazing holiday season. Because our goal at the beginning of this year was, because last year with we launched this podcast and we got a lot of the male voice actors immediately. Right. But with the title Waifus of Overwatch, we also, and part of the reason why we love Overwatch is the female characters yeah. because they're so diverse. And they are so powerful in so this game. Powerful. And, oh. and like, it, it is so rare to have a game where uh, women aren't just like these 20 year old chicks with huge boobs. Exactly. Like, in Overwatch, exactly. they are all so diverse. In a way, it's funny because, like, maybe, like, the most stereotypical one would be Widowmaker. Right. In a way, like, this French the sexy, game. yeah, yeah femme yeah. fatale and stuff, even though she is so layered and so that yeah. she cannot be stereotyped. Yeah. But, uh, and, like, her, her history is like, okay, no one has that story, so <laughs> she, she's perfect. But it's true, all these characters, again, little chubby May, and then Zarya with that pink hair and that, like, bodybuilding body. And Moira, are you kidding and, me? And, and Roger's Moira. Moira. Oh, oh yeah. so good. So cool. <laughs> and the metal bird, I know that you oh, interviewed with Gen Con recently. Oh, and Farah yeah. is amazing. Yeah, uh, with Farah, all that. Anna again, yeah, oh. and, oh, it's just... Yeah, so we so this year we've managed Tracer, who's gay. And yes, like, uh, yeah, all and, of it, and all Symmetra of it. being uh, autistic. Yeah, like, yeah, it's just yeah. the diversity, yeah. right? And so this year we've gotten like with, with you for Christmas. We're so grateful that this year has been filled with the women of Overwatch. Like, what a blessing, Danielle! Like, did, I, I can't tell you another video game where we could have gotten twelve yeah. months worth of yeah. female lead characters yeah. to interview. You know what I mean? Like yeah. one game, like. Even, even um, you know, in panels, they have to get, they, they get women from different games to, like, get their lead characters together. They can't gather together 12 lead characters yeah, in yeah, a one video yeah, game. Yeah. Like, this is that these video are game. All, these are all heroes. Yeah. These women are so all good. heroes. And I am so, so happy because for, there are so many people playing the game. Yeah. And that just means that there are so many young girls who are getting this as, like, Casual, normal. normal. This is normal. Yeah, this, this is, is normal. the new normal. And this is 
2017. Yeah. So no no <laughs> more exactly. of these panels like at that. conventions where there's seven men and one woman. Like, we don't have to do that whole, oh, look, hi, I'm at a convention, and they, I'm the one woman at the convention. Yeah. Yeah. Now we yeah. can be, like, dominating the convention scene. Which also means something else. And, and I'm just realizing this as I'm speaking, is that because there wasn't one female character or, like, actor at BlizzCon surrounded with, like, all these men... It meant that each woman could actually be herself. Yeah, like there wasn't really this exactly. need to put on like the super nice dress and like be super like made, made up, up and yeah, everything. Yeah. It was just like Gen Con. She has her silver pants. That's fine, and like her flame shoes, whatever. They were brilliant. But Anna, she's got like you know her what, Egyptian what she gorgeousness. Is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I had my little Parisian thing, and it was just like we were just being ourselves, and that was fine. Which it's was true perfect. that when you're like alone, well, you kind of tend to, you know, go into that place, go back to that place that yeah. we are so used to being in and as we're women. Put in. Like, we're also put there for a reason. It's like yes. you are quote yes. unquote the woman. Exactly. So we need you to play the role of the yes. woman yes. amongst all of these yes. men. Yes. Mm-hmm. As we see, it's like it's a subconscious it's thing at this point. It really is. That's what we see in films. That's what we see in action movies. That's Overwatch is breaking that consciousness, and it should it be. Is. It's, oh yeah. Even for me, when I show up to jobs and stuff now, like there's things that happen now. That I'm like, I can't tolerate uh, the yeah. way it used to be. The yeah. old paradigm it of does. beingness again doesn't work for me now that I've spent a year with Overwatch yeah. and I know it's possible. I'm like, yeah. well, that's ridiculous. It, again, it's another window. It just like it opens your brain wide open. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's so great. We thank you so much for your time. I'm so grateful. Oh, you're here. It's great. And uh, of course, Merry Christmas, yes. Happy Holidays. Eat lots of cake. Eat yeah. lots of cake. If Everybody, all of you <laughs> listeners. Um, and in whatever holiday you're celebrating around the world, may you have the best one possible. The most important thing, be with people you love, family, friends, the, <gasps> the family you've created, your Overwatch squad, you know, and, and spend some quality time playing Overwatch this holiday. Oh, season. yeah. I'm very excited. Probably the event map has already come out, and we are not talking about it simply because we are. This is a different time of year when we're recording this, so <laughs> you're welcome, everybody. Um, but uh, very excited. If you want to follow more about waifus of Overwatch, go to waifusofoverwatch.com. You can see all of our not see. You can hear all of our podcasts with all of the amazing actors we've all, uh, we've interviewed so far for from the cast. And uh, Danielle, can you tell everybody your uh, your Twitch your um, Instagram, your Twitter, all of your info where they can follow you and and just keep t- in touch with your your brilliance. Sure. Uh, so Instagram, I'm at Danny Vox Ray. That's D A N I V O X R A E. Twitter, I'm at Danielle M C V O, and Twitch, I'm at Danielle McCray One. I almost messed that up because <laughs> there's so many handles. And do you have a do you have a you have a website too? Don't you? Yeah, I do. Uh, Danielle McCray VO dot com. Perfect. That's great. And I am at Aaron Fitzgerald on Twitter at Aaron Fitzbadass on Instagram. My website is AaronFitzbadass.com. And um, you know, follow us on uh, at Waifus of Overwatch at Waifus of OW on Twitter. Uh, that's when we post. We post there first for the every brand new podcast. So if that that's where you want to. Oh, and Twitch. I, uh, what am I on Twitch? At Aaron Fitzgerald. But I am not a great Overwatch player. So if you want to see someone who's crummy, who has still made it to Go level to 400. Danielle. No, no, no. Oh, Danielle's sorry. brilliant. I'm the bad one. and But it'll make you feel better about your game. Ah, ha, 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 I am oh. here to service all of you to You're feel better so about fun. your game. Oh, play. God. It's but it so is. much better. What kind of a game can you be mediocre and still be playing a year in? Like, that's what I like. You don't have to become the best of the best to keep playing this game. It's not one of those games where you're like, oh, if I'm not, if I don't get to level again, if I'm not good enough, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. this game I doesn't think, care. I think the most important thing about this game is if you're having fun. I think that's what really matters. So and let's matter be real, the most important skill, thing is it matters how much fun you are you're having with this game. And if you're mm-hmm. moving the payload, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Get on that damn failure. Follow the objective, people. Follow the objective. Genjis, Hanzos, I'm talking to you. Follow the damn objective. <laughs> Find your 
entire squad play together. It's cool. a definitely. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you so much, Chloe. Oh no, thank you. It's been great. Uh, oh, I don't so know much. how we're gonna top ourselves next year, but this year has been spectacular. Um, thank you all of you who listen to Waifus of Overwatch and keep us going. And we might just have another surprise for you before we hit deep into 2018. Uh, we love you. Uh, thank you! <laughs> thank you. Bye!